If you want to add new rules to Back Cup, allow us to teach you some of the crazy things allowed by the Great Wizards. You can add or combine these variants as you wish. Keep in mind that with more variants, the game becomes more complex. Before starting the race, deal one multi-essence spell card of their color to each player. In addition to moving and performing an action, you may cast your spell by paying its cost. Before you start the game, shuffle the event cards and place them face down next to the weather cards. Each time the first player draws a weather card, also draw an event card and apply its effect automatically. You can add Lord's Safety Bike card to the event deck before you shuffle it. When you draw this card, the Safety Bike's miniature comes into play. Place the Safety Bike five squares behind the last driver. Draw a weather card to determine its starting lane. Set up the Safety Bike tokens according to the number of players. For three players, two tokens. With four players, three tokens. And six tokens when playing with five players. At the end of each round, the safety bike moves five squares. Then, it places a face-down token without revealing its content. When a player enters a square with a token, they take it and receive the brakes or nitro cubes indicated, provided they have the room for them. Remove Lork's miniature once you have exhausted all of its tokens. In the weather change phase, if the same weather card is drawn, the ghost appears. Place the miniature next to the lap track on the board as a reminder that it will join the race at the end of the round. At the end of the round, place the ghost five squares behind the last pilot's race car. Then draw a weather card to determine on which lane, just like we did for Lorik's safety bike. At the start of each round, Ghost Darkthony always flies six squares over the track without changing lanes, ignoring G-Force, and special squares. If it catches a pilot on its lane, that player must draw a damage card and apply its effect. The ghost will continue its path until it passes the leader or it crosses the starting grid. Once per lap, each player can enter the goblin's pit stop and try their luck. You have 30 seconds to try to repair your race car. During that time, you can roll the dice as many times as you want and apply the results. If you get three imprints, repair a tire of your choice. If you get three shields, repair one section of the car's body of your choice. If you get three impacts, draw a damage card and apply the effect after the pit stop timer runs out. If you get three double icons in the same roll, apply the first two effects and also earn a crystal. After 30 seconds, and once you've applied the damage, return your car to the racetrack. Choose a race car and prepare it as in a multiplayer game. Depending on the number of opponents, prepare their cars as follows. For two opponents, prepare one with soft tires and another with hard tires. For three opponents, one with soft tires and two with hard tires. For four opponents, two with soft tires and two with hard tires. And for five opponents, two with soft tires and three with hard tires. Shuffle the AI cards and deal one for each opponent. Then play your turn normally by drawing three pilot cards and choosing one. Play in turn order as usual and move your opponents as indicated by their AI cards, depending on the weather and the tires at their disposal. In addition to this, the opponents will have nitros and brakes, depending on the weather. The bottom section of the AI card indicates which weapon each opponent has for this round. Rival cars will always try to attack you, and if that's not possible, they will attack the nearest opponent. When a rival crosses a checkpoint, they will always repair their car body first, then the tires, paying the cost as usual. Opponents in the last position may only use their turbo card if they are at least 10 squares away from the next racer.